While reading What is the What, we learned a lot about Sudan's past, but now let's take a look at its present. South Sudan is a landlocked country in northeastern Africa that gained its independence from Sudan in 2011. Its capital city is Juba. The conflict we read about in What is the What finally ended with the 2005 Comprehensive Peace Agreement, under which the South was granted regional autonomy along with guaranteed representation in a national power-sharing government. The agreement also provided for a referendum in the South on independence in 2011, in which 99% of southern Sudanese voted to split from Sudan. South Sudan's economy was based on subsistence agriculture, but after its independence it is now highly oil dependent, while an estimated 75% of all the former Sudan's oil reserves are in South Sudan, the refineries and the pipeline to the Red Sea are in Sudan. Under the 2005 accord, South Sudan received 50% of the former United Sudan's oil proceeds, which provide the vast bulk of the country's budget. But that arrangement expired when Sudan achieved independence. In January 2012, the breakdown of talks on the sharing of oil revenues led South Sudan to halt oil production. A deal in March 2013 provided for Sudan to resume pumping South Sudanese oil in May and created a demilitarized border zone. Despite the potential oil wells, South Sudan is one of Africa's least developed countries. However, the year since the 2005 peace accord ushered in an economic revival and investment in utilities and other infrastructure, but also problems. Apart from the oil issue, several border disputes with Sudan continue to happen. There have been conflicts in Abye, the Nuba Mountains in the South Kordofan State, and in the Jongeli State. The conflict in Abye is a dispute over land between the Dinka and Gok from South Sudan and the Misareya Arab tribesmen from the north. In the Nuba Mountains, violence between pro-SPLA Nuba people and the northern government forces keep happening. Cattle raiding feud between rival ethnic groups in Jongle State has left hundreds of people dead and some 100,000 displayed since independence. South Sudan has also accused Sudan of starting and funding rebel groups that oppose the government in South Sudan. The biggest of these groups is the South Sudan Liberation Army, also known as the SSLA, which was formed by former SPLA commander. Sudan keeps denying these accusations. A conflict between Dinka and newer people has recently sparked up and it's said it started from inside the government. South Sudan's president is Salva Kiir, an ethnic Dinka. Kiir blames the fighting, which began December 15 and has resulted in the deaths of a thousand people on a failed coup by former Vice President Rik Machar, an ethnic newer. Other officials say the fighting began as a turf war between Dinka and newer members of the Presidential Guard, which spread throughout the country. The United Nations estimate that nearly a thousand people have been killed and 45,000 displaced in a clash between the Dinka and newer tribes since violence began December 15 amid rumors of a power grab and a failed coup attempt. A treason trial against four senior South Sudan leaders opened Tuesday as a court heard allegations that the four men helped to plot the coup to President Salva Kiir. The government accused the four men as well as Riek Makar, the former vice president and leader of opposition military forces fighting the government, of agitating for a coup when holding a political meeting early in December. The fighting that broke out December 15th among presidential guards quickly spread across the country. The violence quickly took on ethnic dimensions between the dominant Dinka tribe who support Kir and the Nuer tribe loyal to Makar. Recently, it was said that the two parties had signed a truce on January 23rd, 2014, but the U.S. envoy to South Sudan says thousands of people in South Sudan have died since the ceasefire was signed. The U.S. envoy said the U.S. is deeply disappointed in the South Sudan government and the rebels for failing to follow the truce. He urged immediate respect for the ceasefire and for foreign forces to withdraw. The U.N. has also been linked to suspicious activity by the government of South Sudan. A U.N. truck was found carrying a shipment of weapons. This intercepted shipment of weapons fueled rumors in the capital among government supporters that the weapons were being sent to Makar's rebel troops. U.N. commander of Ghanaian troops in South Sudan, General Dalali Johnson Tsaki, said recently that weapons discovered inside of U.N. trucks last week were being shipped to his Ghanaian troops. Tsaki called the weapon shipping error highly regrettable.